Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me on the Urban Compass. I'm Linwood Jackson, your host. And, uh, and remember, communication and dialogues are central components to empowerment, and no voice is special until it is heard. So let your voice be heard. Today, we are talking about the, the rich cultural arts diversity in the city of Wilmington, Delaware, and I have a great uh, lineup of guests here to speak with you today. We have uh, uh, members from the, the, uh, uh, the, the arts community with stage acting, and we have uh, members of the writing community, authors, and uh, here with us today. And I would like to introduce to you to um, Michelle Collier, who is the director of a stage play coming up, The Laramie Project, over at the Wilmington Drama League. She brought with her a uh, uh, member of the executive board from the Wilmington Drama League, Mr. Alan Harbach. He's also a member, uh, a, a cast member in The Laramie Project. And also we have Mr. Michelangelo Rodriguez, uh, who is uh, an author and writer of movies and books and stage plays. I know you had to hear about each of, of these uh, fine uh, guests I have today. All you have to do is Google their names and they're gonna pop up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank Very you. Well, thank you. Shelly, you are the director of, uh, of a stage play going on right now. Can yes. you give us a synopsis of what it is, the project that okay. you're doing? So the Laramie Project is a fantastic piece of theater. In October of 1998, a young man named Matthew Shepard was attacked by two people, beaten and left to die on a fence outside of Laramie, Wyoming. And on October 12th of 98, he died. And about two weeks later, Moises Kaufman and his organization, which calls the Tectonic Theater Project, um, decided that they needed to do something. So they came to the town of Laramie. They spent a year with the individuals within the town, interviewed them, followed through the entire process, and then they created this piece of work. And it's it's really documentary theater. It's not fictionalizing. It is intended to tell the story of the town and how did the town as a whole handle what had happened in their town? How did they come to terms with what had happened? How did they come to terms with the fact that these two young men that they knew did this horrible crime against this other young man? And so it, uh, the company is eight members. Uh, the show, we have about 50 different characters that are played by eight actors. So each actor has multiple different roles. I think Alan has 12. And they really tell the story of the entire town. So it's not so much about Matthew himself, but it's about how the town responded to the events around his death. And, and the Laramie Project is a production uh, that's highlighting and shining a light on an issue of, of hate crimes, exactly. uh, if you will, exactly. and, and trying to solve this. Uh, exactly. this issue in our community. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another example of how the arts are being used to address issues. Um, Alan, you're in the play, uh, but uh, more important, than, you know, you're a member of the Wilmington Drama League. You're on the executive board. Can you give us a brief history of uh, the Wilmington Drama League, if you well, will? Sure. Uh, the Wilmington Drama League, they, like so many really good things in the community, came out of a bunch of friends just wanting to get together to do something that they felt passionate about, and, and that was doing stage readings. Uh, so that started in the 1920s, and 1933, they kind of graduated to performing it. So uh, as they moved along, they moved into uh, the Lee Mills building, and after a while, especially when a train came by and actually ripped off like the side of the building. It really? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the fire escape was like hanging over, and the train hit it and just like ripped off stuff. They um, they raised a bunch of money and built uh, the Wilmington Drama League, which is, uh, you know, over by Foreman Mills. Mm -hmm. um, on Lee and, Boulevard. Yeah, on Lee Boulevard. And uh, from there, they just kept rolling along, uh, putting on plays, you know, involving the community, building right up to today, doing a lot of things. You know, we got the Linwood Jackson era started when uh, you started with us in uh, Ragtime. Oh, okay, so. you're going back a ways now. <laughs> yeah. That's right, almost we did a great job. We were yeah. in that production yeah. together, that's right. That was good. It started my, uh, uh, that was my introduction to the Wilmington Drama League stage. Uh, actually, uh, I didn't know I could sing, uh, <laughs> but you guys got me out there singing yeah. a little yeah. bit, <laughs> a little bit, not much, a little bit. And, uh, but uh, dancing and acting, we did a little bit more of, and that was a great run. Uh, uh, actually, and we, you have uh, over at the Wilmington Drama League, they have another great run going on right now, Memphis the Musical. Right. Yeah. Um, and I believe they're having tremendous success. And yes. I think they just extended 
they did. Uh, Memphis uh, sold out a lot of its shows, mm -hmm. so the decision was made to extend it for another weekend. Um, you know, because uh, we had a lot of people saying they want to come back. A lot of people were disappointed they didn't get to see it, mm -hmm. so we're extending that. Hopefully, that'll you know build a lot of buzz going into uh, Laramie, which follows up. Absolutely. Now, is this the 82nd season of the Drama League? What season are we? I in? think we. I think we're actually starting the 83rd. 83rd um, season. Yeah. And and what other shows can we look forward to? Well, I have to pull out my cheat sheet because. Uh, <laughs> yes, you might need it. So, uh, so we've got you know um, Memphis, and then Laramie uh, opens up in on the 16th of October. Um, the effects of the Man in the Moon Marigolds, which was a Pulitzer Prize-winning play, is in November. Um, one of the one of the big ones that we're looking forward to is uh, Shrek, the musical. That'll be in, in December. And then uh, part of the Wilmington Drama League family um, is the creative team behind the next one, which is called Resolutions, mm -hmm. a post-Christmas musical. And that was written by uh, Kate Monahan, and uh, the music is by uh, Matt Casarino. Um, which are names you know that we have here in the community. They they do a lot with a uh, drama league, and then we follow up with a uh, John and Jen, another musical, which is a small intimate uh, look at two siblings as they grow up and how they how they react how they interact with each other, and then Little Women, another musical in uh, April, and then uh, we close the season with a play called Closer, uh, and then we've got other things going on like uh, in February we have one acts. Um, you know, which actually is kind of designed for new directors to come in and, mm -hmm. and try out their chops. And uh, we have, a, like last year's uh, One Axe, uh, three of the four, I believe, were written and by people, um, you know, local people. Mm -hmm. and, local uh, directors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or and, playwrights? I'm sorry? Or playwrights? Um, well, like myself, I wrote one and directed it. Um, uh, let's see, I think Ken Mamre. Was it Ken Mamorello wrote one? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Frank Barkowski wrote one, and then uh, then the fourth one was you know just a, a standard one that somebody wanted to do. So the drama league doesn't just pull uh, productions out of out of out of the universe it, 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 that's already popular. Mm -hmm. uh, they you up uh, they bring in up and coming uh, writers. We do. We we try to nurture that that element. You know, people that want plays to to go on um, both at the one act level and then obviously resolutions was written by a, a local author and mm -hmm. uh, the music was by a local musician matt casarino so and that's going up um, on our main stage so it's both uh, the small one acts and large full plays you know we sponsor those and we help we help nurture that that movement mm -hmm. and another thing the drama league does if you don't mind me jumping in Please. is there's so much there for the children Mm -hmm. uh, that want to learn about how to do theater. So we do pillow plays, which are very small productions that are all kids performing, and they're very kid-friendly. They're nursery rhymes and fairy tales, and, and they're all originally written. And it's, it's for I mean, little guys, like five and six and seven, up through maybe middle school. Mm -hmm. So that's their introduction to performing. And actually, one of the members of our cast for Laramie got her start as a really young kid doing pillow plays, and mm -hmm. then she moved to the main stage, and then she's moved, and now she's in this piece of, you know, very serious theater. So it's it's a great thing that the drama league gives back to the community. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so sorry, Shelley just anticipated. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's there on my cheat sheet. Um, but yeah, we do have the the one acts, and then we have youth one acts in the summer, which, um, you know, again nurtures at a very young age the mm -hmm. acting, the directing, and the writing, and. Um, in, in fact, uh, we've got uh, like Hoka Poka, which is a, a pillow play, which will be going up in, in November. Uh, one of the shows, uh, The Man in the Moon Marigolds, which follows on mm -hmm. from um, Laramie, is actually being directed by one of the guys that grew up through this system of working with the one acts and working with the, uh, the pillow plays. And now he's directing one of our main stage plays. Wow, so the Drama League uh, fosters uh, 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 the creative arts and the, the process in young folks, uh, young kids, as you said, and so you have teaching uh, classes there uh, to teach young folks acting, dancing, singing, if you will, uh, just the whole nine yards and moves them right on into the adult right. uh, theater as well. Sure. And not even just the performing aspect, but even the technical aspects of it. When I, I stage managed a production of a musical called 13 last year, and our sound ops, our light ops, were all kids, um, well, kids, teenagers. 
So even in the technical realm, it's teaching the young people about how to do theater so they can be involved in all areas of theater. You mean the behind the scenes? Right. The lighting. Exactly. Right. The, the sound. Exactly. Stage props. Just putting together the whole the whole dynamic of putting on a show. Exactly. Yeah, Basically. Now, do these young folks, or do they direct as well? Do they direct their own plays? They write their own plays? The summer one acts. The, the summer one acts, um, a lot of the plays are written by the youth, um, mm -hmm. and uh, virtually all of them are directed by by kids, mm -hmm. you know, and acted by kids. And the Chrysalis shows sometimes have students as student directors or assistant directors, so they're working alongside an adult. So the full weight of the of the directing doesn't fall on them, but mm -hmm. they, they, they shadow them through the whole process to mm -hmm. build those skills. So I know Shrek has a student director as well as an adult director. That's interesting, and we're gonna get back to that a, a little bit uh, later on. I wanna jump over to uh, my man on the end, Mr. Michelangelo Rodriguez, who has written uh, uh, a few books and a few plays and a few movies himself. Michelangelo, come on in here, buddy. How are okay, you today? Okay, I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me here today. It's my pleasure. I'm also uh, very familiar with the Wilmington Drama League. I've gone to many of their amazing shows and I've just been so impressed. Mm -hmm. And their last show, Memphis, was directed by a former alumni, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what was uh, the director of Memphis? Right, mm -hmm. yeah, Dominic is Dominic he's an Santos. incredible performer. Uh, he was in Civil War, which we did last spring. He's in Shrek, which is coming up in December, so he's involved everywhere. <laughs> and the, the prices are reasonable, it's a great venue, and I always enjoy going there. And uh, I am a playwright, I do write plays. I've had one produced at Seven Stages in Atlanta, Georgia, where I used to live. And then also, we did a great movie last year called The Wilmingtonians. Right, I remember 60 that. 60 Minutes, the comedy. It's viewable online at wilmingtonians.com. And we wrote the script for that. We're writing a couple of other scripts, meaning that I, I work with local producers such as Gordon Del Giorno from Film Brothers. And other people pop in and out, camera people and stuff. We all work together to uh, do these things. So as a writer, I work in that genre and various other genres. Recently, I had the wonderful experience of teaching a writing class in a coffee shop in downtown Wilmington and met Anthony Ortiz. And Anthony came up with this book. He said, I want to publish a book. I want to publish a book. I want to publish the book before I go to the Marines. So Anthony wrote a book, I edited it, and we, and we have an indie publishing company in-house, and we published this book called Methodic, where he wrote about his high school experiences, and he's quite a writer, and I've always, uh, I'm always feel, I always feel blessed when I meet someone like an 18-year-old Anthony who loves to write. He could be doing other things, you know, and he works and he writes, and we're going to see a lot more books from Anthony J. Ortiz. Mm -hmm. He writes in the style of Dean Koontz. Dean Koontz is somewhat of a gothic writer who takes various themes and uh, develops them in quirky ways. If you never get a chance to, watch, to read Dean Koontz, you should pick up one of his books. Okay, and tell us about some of the books that, that you've written, Michelangelo. Well, some of the books I've written, this is my favorite. This is the story of Koki Claus. And I've actually brought Koki with me today. Wow. Hello, I'm Koki Claus. <laughs> hey. All right. Well, Koki came from an idea that uh, when I lived in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I taught at the university there, and we had Christmas. I thought, well, Christmas is not really Latino. They have three kings, they said. So why don't I create a character like Koki, who is actually a, a Koki, which is a frog who thinks he is Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So we call him Koki Claus. And we had an illustrated article that appeared in Scripps Howard newspapers, which was a, a lead article over the Christmas Three Kings holiday in Puerto Rico. And we had this featured so I took the feature and I created a publication from that, uh, the story of Koki Claus. So 
So it's a lot of fun. It's also available on Amazon in a bilingual format, Spanish. And there is a play about it that maybe <laughs> someone in this room can get it done. Well, so, they do have the director submissions over at the Wilmington Drama League, I think at the beginning of the yes. year, around January. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, uh, we encourage anybody uh, who wants to put on a show, uh, uh, you know, starting out to submit yeah. uh, your application in at the Wilmington Drama League. You can look out for that, that uh, later on, I suppose, uh, uh, in the year, as the year comes to, to the beginning of the year, around January or so, I suppose. Uh, they'll be putting out their uh, director submissions for their shows. But uh, today, you know, we have three dynamic people who are very creative uh, in the arts, and that's interesting to, to me. And we're going to get back uh, with to talk to you a little bit more, Michelangelo, uh, on the other side. I believe you want to give us a demonstration on the, the writing process. Yes, Is that I would correct? like to share with your audience the writing process. So if any of you guys out there listening, you're thinking about writing, you want to tune in and, and catch this brief class. Michelangelo is a professor. Well, I was like Linwood. We are both uh, ex-military people. We right. served and I served in the U.S. Air Force and you were in the Army, the right? U.S. Army. And we were very proud of that. But after that, we were bet, uh, we were bet, uh, we got the benefits of the GI Bill and went to school. Mm -hmm. And I got a BA in English from the Ohio State University, which is playing a football game today. Mm -hmm. And also uh, got a master's degree at the uh, University of Windsor and worked with uh, this fabulous well-known author named Joyce Carol Oates. I met her in the late uh, early 70s. This is my pride and joy I have a sign autographed copy by Professor Joyce Carol Oates. And she was recently given uh, a humanitarian uh, Medal of Honor by our dear President Obama. Joyce Carol Oates is one of my favorite authors. Uh, everybody knows, most people know I'm an avid boxing fan and she wrote one of my favorite of all time books on boxing. Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, so we want to talk a little bit about that more, uh, Michael Andrew. We appreciate you coming on and sharing with us uh, the creative process of writing. And we're going to get back to that on the other end. And in the interim, I want to talk a little bit more about Lar the Laramie Project okay. and how that came about. How long have you been directing, Shelly? Well, I've directed in several different places. I've worked with the Drama League. This is my fourth season here. I've directed at a number of other places before I came to the Drama League. Uh, directed at several schools. I'm a teacher, so I've directed the schools where I've taught before. Uh, this is, it's, it's a great experience to be directing adults now, because mm -hmm. most of my directing has been with teenagers. Um, wow. Sometimes it's not tough. all that different. <laughs> 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 no, we have a fabulous cast. We really do. Mm -hmm. um, but How I, many? How many cast members? We have, we have eight people in the cast, and like I said, they take on about 50, 55 different roles. Is that by design? Yes. Because generally actors do one, maybe two exactly. characters. Fifteen is a stretch, isn't it? This is the wow. way the piece was written. Okay. Now, it has been, I mean, it was first performed in 2000. So for over 15 years, it's been performed a myriad of times and a myriad of different ways. Um, it's been performed, I've seen a video of productions that had a cast of 80. Um, but it was originally conceived of as a cast of eight. And so I decided that I wanted to stay true to their original concept, mm -hmm. which is the cast of eight, the, the group that traveled to Laramie to do the research for this piece was a group of eight. And so I felt pretty strongly that I wanted to maintain their vision and how they intended to do this. Wow, and where is Laramie? Laramie is in Wyoming. It's where the University of Wyoming is located. Okay, and that's where all the trouble originally started. Exactly. But all over this country, we have issues yes. of hate, hate crimes, yes. hating on people. And and I tell you, I, I often wonder how can we ask for, uh, you know, peace and love, and then turn around and, and start hating on other people. You know what I mean? Uh, well, and uh, what brought me to this piece is last year at this time, I was stage managing the production of To Kill a Mockingbird at the Drama League, mm -hmm. and so was so wrapped up in this production. Um, and you think of the things that happened last year over the summer with shootings. Mm -hmm. and, so, and then I did this projection and shortly after To Kill a Mockingbird was over, I picked up Laramie and read it for the first time. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the same story. Mm -hmm. It's the same story in a different context. It's about a town dealing with a horrific act and dealing with hate and dealing with prejudice because Matthew Shepard was gay. Mm -hmm. And so it brought up prejudice within the town of, of Laramie. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's 
it's, it's a piece that takes place 60 years later, 70 years later, and it's the same story. And 15 years later, the same story. It has to be told again and again. And until we, until we tell the story often enough that people start understanding what hate is, nothing's going to change. I say it all the time, no voice is special until it is heard. If we don't talk about it, then won't nobody know about it. We can't address it. And that's why I'm so happy uh, that uh, people in the arts share their platform uh, to try to solve some of these issues that we have out, out in our community. And that's what Laramie does, is addressing the issue of hate and, and, and ra racism, discrimination, and all that stuff need to go. How can you, I hate on you and ask you not to hate on me? It just don't mm -hmm. make any sense. Um, and so, uh, uh, Alan, you're in the play. You're in the play. What parts do you play? Uh, 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 <laughs> Shelly uh, already uh, told us you're doing go. like there's eight and nine characters yeah. going on. Um, if you can remember them all. Sure. <laughs> Some of the major ones, um, Harry Woods, uh, Rulon Stacy, Sergeant Hayne, um, Fred Phelps, uh, the West Baptist Bureau. The West Baptist Bureau. Westboro Ooh. Baptist. West, uh, whatever. Uh -oh. It's a tongue twister. It, you, you remember the uh, the preacher who went around mm -hmm. um, with his group at funerals and oh. other events with the signs saying, uh, you know, queers are going to rot in hell, etc. So I play him. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's there's a lot of characters. And how do you remember those lines? Give us a tip. <laughs> How long um, have you been performing, first off? I've been performing since I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. So how do you study your line? How do you remember them? Give well, us a tip. Well, you know, um, this, this play actually is really easy to, to memorize the lines. Um, and I'm not one for, for <laughs> memorizing things easily. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this play, you know, the characters are telling a story, essentially. You know, and it's, it's very linear where they're just... This is what happened. This is what happened. This is how I felt, and it it was very easy to, to learn because you're telling a story. You're not really holding a conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. You're telling the audience this story that happened. Do you do you feel affected by all these characters? For example, I, I heard that Heath Ledger, he actually when he did the, the role in Batman of uh, that that crazy fella, mm -hmm. that he that he was so he so internalized that role that he would just get. Like depressed because that character was crazy and, and yeah, the Joker, the Joker, yeah. Joker? yeah and Heath Ledger was so Complex affected by character. that. Yeah. yeah, it can be by playing that character. Do you get affected that way also? I do. Um, you know, I feel I feel things pretty strongly emotionally, but especially in this play, I go from um, one man who broke down on TV when trying to speak to you know a national audience about it to Fred Phelps the the uh, the hate minister, mm -hmm. you know, the minister of hate. You know, I go right from that character to that character, and it's a, it's a real mind bend to, sure. to change those emotional gears. And that was actually something that I did pretty intentionally. If you look at the spread of characters that each, act, each actor plays, I intentionally had each individual play people on both sides of the fence, both wow. sides of the story, okay. because I think that's really important for us to understand that you know this is my view and I feel very strongly that way, but the person who feels exactly opposite for me is still a person and still deserves the same respect and holds as deeply and as strongly to his beliefs or her beliefs than I do to mine. And I might think you're wrong and I might think you are short-sighted, but I have to respect you as a person because if I disrespect you, then I become what I am fighting mm -hmm. against, what I'm working against. Mm -hmm. And so I did that very intentionally with how to break down the parts and, okay, this actor, what parts is this actor going to play? And this actor, what parts are they going to play? Um, so it was, it was very much by design, which yeah. makes your job harder, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good by design because identities, you know, I write about people's identities. They're so complex and there were so many facets to mm -hmm. identities, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So that's a really a good thing. As a writer, I do it by design too. Right. So, but you see the things that go into personalities. Yeah, and one of the things that I, I'm sure, as as a writer and as an actor, that you try to avoid is is just finding that one facet and making that the whole person. That's right. You know, because, uh, for example, the Fred Phelps guy. You know, he's he's out there. He's saying, you know, God hates you. God hates you, and and he's doing it. And you think, oh, why why are you doing this? But in, in a way, he's doing it because he's trying to save you. Mm -hmm. You know, 
he kind of loves you and he's trying to tell you you're going down a wrong path. He's bigoted and racist without question, but in a way he's trying to do it from, from you know, because he feels that you need to be saved. I think uh, when, you, when you design your characters like that and you pick actors to portray them, I think it stretches the, the, the actor's oh, gosh, yes. horizons a little oh, bit. Yes. You know, they're not like the character that they're portraying, but if they can make it work right. on stage, on camera, right. then, then their, their whole being stretches as an actor. Absolutely. It enhances their skills dramatically. Absolutely. Um, we're coming down to a break. Uh, we're coming up on a break, so uh, Shelly, why don't you tell us when is the play? Okay, so Laramie Project opens on October 16th. We run the 16th and 17th at 8, and then the 18th, which is a Sunday, at 2, and then the following weekend the same. Friday and Saturday is at 8, and then Sunday is at 2. The other thing that we're offering is we're doing a daytime show on the 22nd, which is a Thursday, that's specifically for school groups. So if school groups or homeschooled groups would like to come, they can contact the theater. That's a specific performance aimed directly at schools because this is a, a topic that teenagers really need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say I wouldn't recommend it for anyone under high school age. It is, it is some heavy material, and the things discussed and some of the language used is really a high school level performance. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Uh, you wouldn't want uh, people under 18 coming? No, under high school age, so maybe under 14. Under 14. Right. Uh, okay, so the, in high school, if they're in high school, they right. can come out and check out the show. Right. And if not, then do you have a website? How come they buy the tickets? The best place to do is on the Wilmington Drama League website, which is just WilmingtonDramaLeague.org. You can buy the tickets right there. There's also the phone number for the box office if, if you'd rather call and purchase tickets that way. And the prices? I believe there's 17 or 20. It's twenty dollars for <laughs> for adults and seventeen for students and seniors and, and seniors. children's like twelve I think. Mm -hmm. right. All right, so come on out to the Wilmington Drama League. Um, we're coming up on break, and on the other end of the break, we're going to ask my good friend Michael Angelo Rodriguez if he'd be so kind to give us a writing demonstration. Sure. And uh, what are some of the concepts of, for writing? What are the dynamics of writing? What are you going to go? Over? Well, there's the first process is brainstorming. Uh, prior to that is probably being in touch with your dreams and seeing what kind of things pop up and how you can use that in a story. And then you have to go up from brainstorming, you have to create, of course, a plot. You go from plot and you keep moving along. And then the hardest part is the editing. You may have like 200 pages and it's unbelievable how many times you need to edit it to get it right. You can, you can have a girl named Jenny and in some parts of the book, she's J-E-N-N-Y. But then if you're not a careful editor, you might, make, might not see that in some parts she's J-E-N-N-I. Okay, but interesting. The, every reader will catch that and send you a little email <laughs> that, oh, you got this mistake and her name is J-E-N-Y. There's a lot of little things like that, you know, that you have to really keep your eye on. So we're gonna talk about that. And that's uh, getting the writing process moving along, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with writer's block, and uh, that that's way. That's good. I know I'm trying to write myself, and I'm sure you, my guess as well has probably thought about writing from a time or two, um, um, if you haven't already. I don't know. Have you written? I have. I, I'm an English teacher, oh, so oh, I write. Wonderful. That's, that's right. what I do. What about you, Alan? Um, I've written plays, stories, that type of thing. So you guys all written it. How long does it take you to write a play, Alan? It depends. Um, they, on average, on average. Oh, well, I write pretty much one act. So usually you've got a central idea, and you can grind those out in a couple hours, or it can take you months. You know? Okay. How many one acts have you written? Uh, probably about seven. Seven one acts. Okay, cool. Any any that we recognize? Any well, um, we staged uh, Shakespeare's Bromance uh, okay. last year, mm -hmm. and that's actually been around uh, in three theaters locally. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And what about you, Shelley? You say you've written a lot. That's Well, it's what I do. Most of my writing is with my students and for my students. There's okay, no stage plays, no books? Not that have been produced yet. No, but <laughs> okay, they're Have coming. to have something on the horizon. Right? That, that's what's on the horizon. But the I do... Teaching. Teachers end up doing a lot of writing, especially mm -hmm. if you're an English teacher. So I teach English and American Sign Language. Absolutely. And I believe you have a writer coming that's going to be uh, on the Laramie Project. Or we involved. do. We have a fabulous opportunity with the Laramie Project. Um, in conjunction with the show, we're going to have an art show in the lobby. And then the second Friday of the run, 
which is the 23rd. We have B Proud coming. She's a photojournalist, and she's produced a book called First Comes Love, and it's a book about LGBTQ couples. And so her photography is stellar. When I first picked up her book, I think I could not put it down for about two hours just looking at these photographs. Mm -hmm. So her photographs will be on display the whole run, but then the 23rd will be doing a book signing. They'll so be she will be displayed in the there. lobby. Yes. Of the drama league. Yes. Okay. I'd like to add that this is a great time for people to write. Uh, our, your audience of any age, you can stop, you can start writing uh, because we're breaking down cliches. Traditionally, a lot of the roles were very cliche. Now you can have a multicultural person playing a specific part. Usually Shakespeare was performed by men dressed as women, correct? Yes. But now you can have a Shakespearean character, African-American or Asian, and all these cliches are just falling apart. And it's wonderful with the Laramie Project that they bring these things forward yes. and they show that uh, LGBT people are just people. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, there was this whole generation who thought the LG people, LGBT people were dangerous and dark. So it's really wonderful that we can break these cliches down through drama and through writing and something that your audience could practice and try to do. Absolutely. Well, I certainly hope our, our members of our audience go out and check out this show. Um, I think there's eight plays, yes. you know, eight shows? Yes. Seven or eight shows uh, at the Wilmington Drama League on Lee Boulevard. Uh, and the dates again? We open on October 16th and we run through October 25th. And you can check it out on uh, the WilmingtonDramaLeague.org website. You can purchase your tickets there as well and, uh, and, and check out Alan doing his eight characters. He said, don't add none, it's just seven. <laughs> <laughs> you could have gave me one of them. I would have just, he's still there. I think there's still time. I have the director here, <laughs> Shelly, man, you can get a part. And uh, um, it, uh, again, if you guys are interested in performing uh, on stage, you can go to the Drama League and audition. Uh, check out the website again, find out when the auditions are coming up. There's great uh, shows coming up in the season. Alan talked about them when we opened the show. And uh, I know we're coming up on break soon, but uh, when we do, uh, Mr. Michael Angelo has performed as well mm -hmm. uh, on the Wilmington Drama League stage. It's just a great opportunity, uh, young and old alike, you're never too old, to get out and perform or write. So we're going to take a break right here. When we come back, I'm going to invite Mr. Michael Angelo to give us a demonstration on how to start the writing process. Okay. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back and welcome to the Urban Compass with Linwood Jackson. Um, I do want to get a couple of shout outs uh, right now. I, I want to announce that I am dancing 
uh, for the March of Dimes, Dancing for the Babies, and my dance partner, Ms. Kimberly Lapalucci, who's the director, of, uh, one of the directors over at the AARP, is my uh, dance partner this year. We're going to be doing some Argentine tango and a salsa combination uh, over at the Sheraton uh, South on October the 19th. I do have some tickets. All proceeds go to the March of Dimes. We're going to try to uh, raise like $10,000 and to diminish, uh, you know, a lot of moms can't reach full-term uh, pregnancies, and, and we want to try to diminish some of the problems uh, that threaten the lives and the health of their babies. Uh, so please uh, support us. We, uh, we're asking for, um, uh, we need some uh, sponsors, uh, the food sponsors. You can donate silent auction items. Uh, or you can just purchase a ticket. You can get online at marchadimes.org, marchadimesdelaware.org, Dance for the Babies, and contribute uh, to uh, myself and Ms. Kimberly Lapalucci and help us uh, uh, wipe out some of these uh, uh, bad pregnancies that these ladies are having out there. Um, today, on today's show, we are talking about the arts and, and, and the groups in the community. I was happened to be featured uh, in Out and About Magazine, September edition. So if you didn't get your copy, give me a call. I got plenty of them man. when I was going around, I guarantee you. I'm in the middle here uh, with members of the Wilmington Drama League. I see Kathy Butterbog and Tammy and her children there and, uh, and other members of the arts community as well. Uh, there's an inside uh, spread here, uh, right there. And you, Right there, there you go, all right, all right, see, uh, all the art shows uh, in Wilmington area. There's plenty of uh, shows going on. We are rich uh, in our community uh, with cultural arts, so you just find something to, to do, uh, get out there, just get online, and I uh, gotta push Wilmington Drama League. We have members of the Wilmington Drama League here. We're talking about Laramie Project coming up soon with the director, uh, Ms. Shelley, uh, Ms. Shelley Collier, and we have Alan Harbach, who is a, a member of the cast and on the executive board at the Wilmington Drama League. They gave us a, lot, a wealth of information about that. And uh, we forgot to mention that um, they can sign up. And you, we, during break, we were talking about all the projects that they have going on at the Drama League. And one of them we forgot to mention on air was? Oh, the, uh, the fact that um, as part of reaching out to the community, we rent out the the, we um, rent the out theater. the theater in yep. case if you have a show or a project you want to do, you can rent out this stage. It holds up to 300 people. Uh, it doesn't cost much uh, to put your show on. And um, uh, my next guest was Mr. Michelangelo Rodriguez, who is uh, uh, author of The Wilmingtonians. And then The Wilmingtonians Second Chances is a great movie uh, out there about our great city and the things going on. And I just, he was, he gave me a small part in his movie, uh, Dancing Nonetheless, but we were dancing. All right, it was a little dance, but it was a big dance for me. My first movie project, The Wilmingtonians, written by my good friend, Mr. Michelangelo Rodriguez, who also written a bunch of stage plays and books. And we have him uh, over here set up and ready to go. He's gonna give us a quick uh, demonstration on how the creative process uh, starts with regards to writing. You ready, Michelangelo? I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelangelo Rodriguez, author. Well, well it's wonderful to be here. Uh, the creative process is it's being in touch with the universe, with spirituality, uh, being in touch with your environment, your surroundings. For example, we are filming a movie now called Slavery's Children. Slavery's Children evolved out of the fact that I was suffering from depression and trauma that uh, I got in the Viet when I was in Vietnam. And I thought, well, what, are, what do other people, how do they work with this? With trauma and depression and alienation. So we came up with, so I came up with Slavery's Children. So Slavery's Children, Slavery's children. Well, I thought, well, let me talk to other people. I talked to my uh, creative partner, Gordon Del Giordano, at film production, and he said, well, I know some people who, who, who had terrible experiences. So the first step in the writing process was brainstorming. So we brainstormed Slavery's children 
we went back and forth. Did we want to touch upon slavery or did we want to touch about other things? We said, no, we'll just focus on people who've been traumatized. So we found four people who just had horrendous experiences in their life, which sort of turned it into a documentary. And we found some, we found people who had been put out on the street when they were kids and had to do terrible things in order to support their large families. And we found other people who are undergoing uh, transgender changes. So we brainstormed and we came up with that. So this would be a documentary. There are other types of writing too that you can involve yourself in. For example, this will right off. I'll just flip it over. How about that? There are other types of writing you can involve yourself into. There's article writing. You want to write an article? Well, when I was in Puerto Rico teaching at the University of Puerto Rico, I thought, well, I'm a diver. Why don't I write something about diving? So I came up with a couple of stories. One was about dive. I didn't know a thing about it. So I came up and they took pictures and it was published in the Scripps Howard. And then I had another interesting experience. This article, I went to visit the caves of Puerto Rico. I said, well, why don't I write about it? And I had this wonderful article published. And then one, one time I sat down with this very, very old person and she told me some ghost stories about Puerto Rico. I said, it's a dark and stormy night, right? So I wrote about that. Something I was not at all familiar with, biofeedback. So I wrote an article on biofeedback for Scripps Howard. Lots of fun. So those are articles. So you can do articles. You, if you want to submit an article to a newspaper, you send out a query letter. So there's all kind of letter writing, letters. You have to really be concise with letters and just say your point. I send it to an editor, say I have this great story about Linwood Jackson, and uh, send it to them and a little bit, and then just keep it to three paragraphs. So when you do your letters, you want to keep them short and concise, preferably, preferably one page. OK, so we have letters. And we also have poetry, another great type of writing. So when I was going through my, my personal experiences thinking about the war, I was sad. And uh, I said, well, let me just figure out how to deal with this, this condition. So I sat down and I wrote some poetry. And uh, it came out, of course, I think it's great. but. You can write poetry. How do you write poetry? It's just a flow of words. There are, to me, I know we have an English teacher here in the audience, poetry is just what comes out of your soul. It doesn't really need to follow a format. There are different types of poetry. There can be um, prose poems, which is just a paragraph that's poetic. Or if you want to write sonnets, read some Shakespeare. But just sit down and just write. And when you start writing, you'll find out that words just come out of, your, out of your soul. They just come to you. You hear the words. It's just something that develops over time. I've been a writer ever since I was uh, a child. So it just, it's like a skill, like, like being a shoemaker, like being an ironsmith, being a construction worker. It's something that you just develop. You don't need to be a born writer, or you don't need this fascinating talent to be a writer. You learn the process of writing. You can get great books on writing, such as Ray Bradbury, Zen and the Art of Writing. So Zen is mindfulness, where you think about writing. You think about what you're writing about. OK, so quickly, I don't want to write all these down. We have poetry, articles, fiction novels, 
nonfiction novels, we have screenplays, we have all lots and lots of other types of writing. Okay, okay I have so a question for you, Michelangelo. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the, uh, uh, like a lot of times uh, people don't have time, like myself, I want to write. Can I hire a ghostwriter? Explain ghostwriting. Well, you can hire a ghostwriter. You just take your idea and talk to the ghostwriter and say, well, I'd like to write uh, a book about so-and-so. Okay, do and you, are you a ghostwriter as well? I usually just do my own materials, but I help other like young writers who want to get published through my indie publishing company called Avocado Media. And I help them, and I don't charge them anything. I say, well, let me look at your manuscript and work with you on getting this out and published. And then we work with Amazon.com to publish the book and put it on sale on Amazon. But ghostwriting, uh, I, don't, I personally don't do it, but I could do it. Mm -hmm. but, okay, uh, so we can uh, find most of your books on Amazon.com? Yeah, it's under Michelangelo Rodriguez. Michelangelo Rodriguez yeah. on Amazon.com, and you're all over, just Google your name. Now, do you do meet and greets and sign uh, uh, some book signings? Those are my favorite things to do, meet and greet. Uh, as a veteran, I had a meet and greet on my, on my book, Rock and Roll Meltdown, and I got to read some of the poetry, and I did meet and greet and uh, sign books for people. And uh, I'm really thrilled by meeting them. Well, Michael Angel, we want to thank you for coming on and sharing your tips and, and insight on the creative process of writing books. We're getting low on time. And I want to thank my uh, guests for coming on as well. You know, all of these creative minds going on out in, and wonderful souls out in our, our beautiful, our great but small state of Delaware, with particular regards to Wilmington. I know you're not from Delaware, from Pennsylvania, but I've, you, you I've do a lot of work here. I've been in Delaware for a long time. Absolutely. So I've just recently moved. Absolutely. And Alan, are you homegrown? You're Delaware? I, I came from Southern Delaware, up here from university, I went away for a while and came back. Michelangelo, are you from Delaware? Well, but I'm uh, from New York City. I want to just wrap up with one last thing, is that every writer should carry a book that says create. You can buy these anywhere, and you can write down your ideas. And my last great idea was zampires. I was down on Slaughter Beach. I thought, how come we don't have zombies and vampires living together and interbreeding? So I'm coming up with this great story, and hopefully we'll have it out by Halloween. Now, is that a stage play, a movie? No, that is a fiction book based on uh, the beaches of Delaware. <laughs> okay. it, it has all characters, but probably uh, Alan will play in the, the movie version. <laughs> I thought I had that role, Mike Wanslow. Uh, you're gonna, you got the role of the teacher. All right, the there you go. <laughs> the University of Delaware. Well, I can take tips from the two teachers, uh, the three teachers I have as guests today. I'll be looking forward to uh, getting some tips from you on how to portray a great teacher. Uh, in closing, Michael Angelo. In closing, I want to tell you that when I was in high school and I graduated, I graduated with all C's. This was in the Theodore Roosevelt High School in the Bronx. Uh, my future looked very dim. So I, my mom used to give me all these books to read. And then one day, we had the great power blackout of New York City. And I just started writing in a journal about what was going on in the subway with no lights. Then after that, I got the writing bug. And then after that, I went to the military, then I went to school and fell in love with writing. So don't let anyone dissuade you. If you, if you, if you let people do that, you won't succeed. Just think of success. And writing is a good way to communicate. All right. You couldn't, you, couldn't know, you couldn't have said it any better, Michelangelo, my thoughts precisely. Again, we want to thank you for coming on and sharing uh, your writing skills and insight with us. There's some valuable information. I'm sure our listeners and viewing audience got some, some good knowledge out of that one. As well as my other two guests, uh, Alan, you got any closing remarks you'd like to say, man? Um, just come out to the theater, support that. Um, we love to get everybody from the community. And I think with uh, Michelangelo's new book, we've got beaches like Slaughter Beach and Broadkill mm -hmm. that, that fit great with his story. Uh, uh, Shelley? I would just like to encourage people to come out. One of the lines in the show that I keep coming back to is Father Roger says to the members of the project, we want to make sure that we tell the story correctly. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to honor the town by telling the story correctly. And I can't wait to share the story with a, a large audience. Uh, does that include uh, adult language? When you there mean telling a story correctly, you can't 
Exactly. The, the lines that are in the script are word for word what these people said when they were interviewed. So mm -hmm. it's not censored, it's not changed, so it's the way people speak. And when people deal with heated issues and deal with emotional issues, sometimes their language choice is is hard and we want to honor that and respect that. And what year is this, uh, the setting is? 1998. 1998 and here we are in, in, in uh, uh, 2015 already. So a lot of the language being used on the stage, the stage play, not necessarily reflecting what we want to share off the stage. Right. Uh, uh, this is, but they're just trying to stay true to the period. I respect that. Uh, the Wilmington Drama League, I have to commend the guys over there doing a lot of hard work. The, their season promises to be uh, an exciting and entertaining one. Uh, I can't wait uh, to be involved. I'm glad to be involved in the process by presenting it uh, to you guys here. Uh, before we go off, I believe we have a couple of minutes left. I want to encourage you guys again to buy tickets. Uh, as a TV and radio host, I can't, uh, uh, you know, I've been touched by a lot of stories uh, from the Delaware Valley, and um, the, the, the one that impacts me the most is our pregnant women having difficult uh, pregnancies, and we can help that by joining the March of Dimes. And please purchase tickets and support my dance partner and I. And don't forget to check out my radio show, the Little Jackson Radio Show on WFAI 1510 every Sunday, 2 to 3. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll be back next week, same time, same place. Thank you.